Hello and welcome to another video here on AV Forums. I'm Phil Hinton, I'm the site editor, and in this video we're going to have a look at the LG G2 best settings out of the box for film and TV content. This will include SDR, HDR and Dolby Vision settings and most of these are the same so it should be nice and simple working our way through this. We get plenty of questions on how we actually change between HDR and SDR settings in Dolby Vision uh, on the TVs. So what we do is we use the Spears & Munsell UHD HDR benchmark disc. We'll show you the menu screen here and as you can see we can choose which content we want to feed the TV, whether a Dolby Vision HDR10+, although this set doesn't support HDR10+. And then we have HDR10 and we have different settings there for NIT levels, as well as the container in which uh, we want the HDR10 to perform, whether BT2020 or P3D65. So that's what we can do. And we also, down the bottom, as you can see, bottom right, SDR100 NITs BT709. So that's where we're going to start. So once we've chosen that within the disk player, we then click the settings button on the remote control and then we're going to click all settings. And in here, you can see that we've actually selected what we want to select, which is filmmaker mode. It says user settings. That's because I have made some changes in here. Uh, we're then going to click on advanced settings and we're just going to make sure that everything in here is set correctly. Now, OLED pixel brightness is at nine here. You don't want it at nine. The default out of the box is 80. Uh, that is bright enough for a bright room. If you are in a dark room, take it down to 35. 35 gives you 100 nits uh, for SDR content. Uh, 80 will do for a brighter room. And again, the rest of these, we're going to leave them as uh, they come out of the box because they are set correctly. Uh, the only other one we want to go into is clarity. We're going to go down and we're going to make sure that true motion is switched off, which it should be. Now there is one other setting we need to do in SDR and that is under the general menu and we're going to go to OLED care and within OLED care we're going to go to device self care and then we're going to go down to energy saving and you're going to make sure that energy saving is switched off. You don't want it on auto, minimum, medium or maximum, it needs to be switched off. That means that you get the full brightness and full dynamic range from the TV. Uh, once we've done that, that's everything set for SDR content. So it's filmmaker mode, a couple of changes. You're going to change the aspect ratio. You're going to make sure that true motion is switched off and you're going to go into general OLED care, device self care, and then you're going to go to energy saving and make sure that energy saving is switched off. So that's SDR. Let's do HDR 10 next. So again, we've used the Spears and Mansell disc to select HDR10. We've done it at a thousand nits uh, container. Right, so we're going to go into all settings and then we're going to go to HDR select and we're going to go down to filmmaker mode and you can see it changing there. That's what we want. We want D65 white point. Again, aspect ratio should stay the same as what you set for SDR, but of course you can go in and just double check that it is on original and on. And of course we're going to go down to advanced settings and we're just going to check that everything is set correctly in here. Again, we're going to make sure uh, that everything is set the way it should be. Now, the one thing that I would suggest is that dynamic tone mapping is switched off if you want to see content as it is intended to be seen. If you want the dynamic tone mapping, you can, of course, switch it on. Uh, nobody's going to call you out on that. It's just that if you want it as it's intended to be seen, you need to switch it off in the menus there. So that's brightness taken care of. We're going to quickly go into color. We shouldn't need to change anything in here and we don't. Uh, everything should be set out of the box correctly when you select filmmaker mode. And again, we're going to go down and make sure that true motion is switched off as well. The only other thing I would suggest uh, that you want to look at is whether you want sharpness at 10, which is the default out of the box. And um, between 10 and zero, there are very little difference in sharpness, but if you want sharpness correct, you can take it from the default of 10 and take it down to zero. Um, I think there's no change actually in sharpness, but your mileage may vary. So you may want to do that as well. You may want to do that for SDR as well. So very quickly, that is everything that we need to do for HDR 10. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to switch over to Dolby Vision. 
So again, we're using the Spears and Mansell UHD disc. Uh, we've now gone back to the menu system. We've now selected the Dolby Vision layer. Uh, so we're now playing Dolby Vision material. So we're going to click the settings button again. We're going to go into all settings. And we're just going to make sure that this is set correctly. And there is no filmmaker mode when it comes to Dolby Vision. The correct mode is cinema. So cinema will play back correctly, D65 and it will play you back Dolby Vision. It's basically Dolby Vision dark mode is uh, the cinema mode. If you go to Cinema Home, that switches on Dolby Vision IQ, um, which does adjust the brightness uh, depending on your room. It uses the sensor. Uh, again, that is going to be personal choice, whether you use Dolby Vision IQ or if you just use uh, normal Dolby Vision uh, in the cinema mode. So we're going to stick to cinema mode. It's going to be the same. Uh, for Cinema Home, there's a couple of things you might want to mess about with with Cinema Home, but we're going to stick with Cinema. Again, original aspect ratio, that's not going to change. Uh, once it's set once, it tends to stay the same, but you do want to just double check that just to start with. Uh, we're then going to go to Advanced Settings, and again, we're just double checking that everything is correct in here and everything is switched off. It needs to be off, and that is the case. Uh, we're going to go to Color. And again, out of the box in default color is set correctly. And then clarity. Uh, again, sharpness, 10 or zero. Uh, there is no difference in my opinion. Um, up to you, completely up to you what you want to set it to. Um, everything else should be switched off and it is apart from real cinema. Uh, so real cinema should be on, but everything else is switched off the way it should be. And that is the settings for out of the box for Dolby Vision. So you can see the content as the creator intended for film and TV content, of course, gaming and so on. You may want to change things around a little bit. The other thing that we're gonna quickly go through is Cinema Home. So this is with Dolby Vision IQ. Uh, this uses the light sensor to adjust the brightness. Again, our aspect ratio is correct. We're just gonna go into advanced settings. There will be some differences in here. Um, they tend to be uh, more of the clarity side of things so we've got a clarity first of all and as you can see super resolution uh, the noise reduction MPEG noise reduction smooth gradation they're all switched on to low and then sharpness is up to 20 now that does make a difference um, so what I tend to do is come in here and take that all the way down to zero again 10 which should be the same um, we'll take it down to zero and then we're gonna go in and we're just gonna change these to off because at the end of the day, we want to see the content as it is intended to be seen. If it's Dolby Vision content, it's going to be high quality streaming or on disc. Uh, so we don't need any of these switching on. I am not sure why Dolby insist on having these switched on in the IQ mode. Uh, you could have, leave this on low uh, if you want to. But like I say, it's it should be a high uh, source material that you're sending in, high quality source. So you know we can switch those off and then true motion again it goes to cinematic movement um, again if we want to see it as intended we're going to switch that off so the only thing that is now left is the is the light sensor um, and that should help you depending on the environment in which you're watching if you're watching in a dark environment um, or a dim environment then just go to cinema uh, and it'll already have switched all those things that we've just switched off off if you want to use iq if it's a brighter room uh, go to Cinema Home and then just switch off the things that I've shown you what to switch off in there. Uh, so hopefully that helps you get started anyway with uh, your journey with the new LG G2. Uh, you can tune in to our review. The review uh, should be up very soon if it's not already up on our channel. Do remember to give the video a like if it has been of help. And of course, if you want more of these settings videos, then you should consider subscribing to the channel. I'm Phil Hinton. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again in our next video.